Now, there is a song that my mom used to sing a lot. And for some reason, I think it was since yesterday, that song kept ringing in my spirit. And I could literally see her <coughs> dancing to this song. And it's a very, very simple song. Uh, most of you might not know it because it is actually in a local dialect. But there is a word in that song that kept ringing and the whole song is all ringing. It simply means, or the song says that, uh, Tetelestai, it is finished. That's all the song says. But it's in a local language, but um, they still use the Tetelestai word. So they say, Tetelesta is finished. Oh, Tetelesta is finished. Tetelesta is finished. So that's, that's a song. And, and that song kept ringing in my ear for since yesterday. I swear it in my ears. So I believe that God wanted us to touch on something, and especially being the Easter season, being the Easter celebration. So the title that we're going to use this beautiful Easter Sunday is Tetelestai. It is finished. Say to your neighbor, say, Tetelestai. It is, it is finished. Say it again. Say like you believe it. Say Tetelesta. Tetelesta. It, is finished. it is finished. Let's please look at St. John's Gospel. St. John's Gospel. Uh, there are a lot of scriptures we have to read. I, I think we might not have time to read all of it. But God will help us. But at least let's read John chapter 19. And then we read some verses as well in chapter 20. John 19 from verse 28 to 42. If you're there, let me see your thumbs up, John 19. 28 to 42. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished. Now somebody say accomplished. accomplished. That the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. Now a vessel full of sour vinegar was sitting there. And they filled a sponge with sour wine. But they put it on his and put it to his mouth. So when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished. Now somebody say, it is finished. Now say like you believe it. Say, it is finished. Now that is the Greek word, tetelestai. Say, tetelestai. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. Therefore, because it was the preparation day, that the body should not remain on the cross on the Sabbath. For that Sabbath was a high day. The Jews asked Pilate that their legs, my God, might be broken, Jesus. And that they might be taken away. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who was crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus, 
and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear. And immediately, blood and water came out. And he who has seen, has testified, and his testimony is true. And he knows that he's telling the truth, so that you may believe. For these things were done, that the scriptures should be what? Fulfilled. Not one of his bones shall be what? Broken. And again, another scripture says, they shall look on him whom they were pierced. After this, Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly, <laughs> For the fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. And Pilate gave him permission. So he came and took the body of Jesus. And Nicodemus, who at first came to Jesus by night, also came, bringing a mixture of men and Alus about a hundred pounds. Then they took the body of Jesus and bound it in strips of linen with the spices, as the custom of the Jews is to bury. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden, a new tomb in which no one had yet been laid. So there they laid Jesus because of the Jews' preparation day, for the tomb was nearby. Let's please jump to the same St. John's Gospel. Let's jump to chapter 20. Chapter 20, I wanted us to read all the way to verse 17. But because of our time, we'll take just a few scriptures. So St. John's Gospel 20, we'll start from verse 1. Now, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb nearby while it was still dark and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. Then she ran and came to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and said to them, they have taken away the Lord out of the tomb. And we do not know where they have laid him. Peter therefore went out and the other disciple, and we're going to the tomb. So they ran together, but the other disciple outran Peter and came to the tomb first. And he, stooping down and looking in, saw the linen cloths lying there. Yet he did not go in. <laughs> I think we'll, we'll read all the way through to verse 17. Just speak in the spirit, pray in tongues for one man. I just had the spirit of the Lord say that today I am turning the story of someone into glory. Today I am turning the story of someone into glory, say the Lord. If you align with me and stay connected to me, say the Lord. That which I'm about to do with you will be a surprise. That which I'm about to do through you will be 
an indelible testimony for all to know that, yeah, I am with you. And I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Say it, the Spirit of the Lord. If you receive that, just give me a shout of praise. Just give me a shout of praise. Zikodomo hoshkabaya. Indele kebozuna mahakash. Indele mahakuskibe. Imatala makuska. Madili kamba zusa vrakuski. Ile prokuski malabush. I see what looks like a book. A copy. A book. And I see the pages turning. And the Spirit of God said to me, he said, tell someone, I am opening a new page concerning your life. Amen. God said he's opening a new page concerning your life. Amen. A page of supernatural manifestations. Amen. A page of supernatural connectivity and sensitivity. Amen. A page of supernatural happenings in your life. Amen. A page of victory. A page of celebration. Amen. So it shall it be. Say the spirit of the Lord. Amen. Yes, Lord, thank you. My God. Just give me some string, will you? You are the air breeze. Oh, Lord. You are. You are the air breeze. Oh, lift your hands wherever you are. The Spirit of God is already moving. You are the air. Hey, Kappa, Limbo Zutabasha. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Lord. Yes, you are, you are the end. Worship him, worship him. Lift your voice. Yes, in your home. Lift your hands. Kobala Mazun Chilibusha. He is Lord. Is Lord, is Lord, Amen. He has risen from the dead. In your home, just worship Him. The Spirit of God has interrupted the service just because of you. Yes, Holy Spirit. Shaba. Every time, worship him, worship him. That Jesus Christ is, is Lord. Worship him all over. Come on, worship him. Amen. He has risen from the dead. He is Lord. Oh, every knee shall bow. Every tongue comes. The Jesus Christ is Lord. in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, sweet Holy Spirit, even for your presence. Thank you for moving from house to house, from person to person. Magido Hoshki Mandalabas. Sweet Holy Spirit, in the name that is above all names. Haha, <laughs> yes. Ligende lia pakula mahasikilis. Ila pokomositi. I see what looks like fresh, liquid, hot oil 
being poured on someone. It's being poured on someone. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. Power of God. That's it. Kadili Mahashkulos. I command the heaviness to be lifted. I see what's like a blanket that has covered someone. It's a sign of being under. It's a sign of being down. It's a sign of being depressed. But this very minute, yes, yes, that's it. Receive it in the name of Jesus. You felt something lift off you. My God, that's it. That is the resurrection power invading your home. Invading your home. That's it. Invading your home. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Whatever it is that has made you down, whatever it is that has made you depressed, whatever it is that has made you morose, today by the power of the Holy Spirit, I command ah, Jesus. <laughs> this very week, this very week, you will receive a message that will gladden your heart because that which has given you that depressive mood the spirit of god said that that has been turned around for your good i said that has been turned around for your good in the mighty name of jesus thank you sweet holy spirit we worship you we give you glory we give you honor. Yes. Yes. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Power. Receive it. Yes. Yes. I rebuke that pain. I rebuke that pain. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Kabbalah Moshaya. Be delivered in the name of Jesus. Be set free. Be healed. Be delivered. Be set free. I speak and I command any bacteria, any virus, any microorganism plaguing your system, putting you through pain, I command it to die in the name of Jesus. I command it to pass out of your body in Jesus' name. Be healed in your spirit. Be healed in your soul. Be healed in your body. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Just lift your hands and receive it. He's here. He's here. My God. The Spirit of the living God has interrupted the service just because of you. He wants you to know that he loves you. That he did not bring you this far to leave you. He did not bring you this far for issues and circumstances and plagues to exterminate you. No. Say the spirit of the Lord. Your future is bright. Your future is bright. For very soon, that which you have seen, that which you have sent, will become a reality, say the Spirit of the Lord. That which you have even seen in dreams and vision, and you have wondered how, where, when will this happen? Say the Lord. In the not too distant future, there will be a manifestation. There will be a manifestation. For that which looked like a mirage will manifest in reality, says the Lord. Do not be afraid. Look up to me. Step out in faith, and you will see my glory, say the Spirit of the Lord. Just worship him. All other gods 
the uh, the wags of man. You are the only God. There is none. All other gods are all. That's it. Worship him. They are the works of men. You are the only God. There is all other gods are all. That's it. Sing in your home, in your lounge, in your kitchen, in your bedroom, in your office, wherever you're watching this. Worshiping. Oh, there is all other gods are oh. the works of men. You are oh, many potent God. Oh, many she and God. Oh, many prayers and God. We say there is none. Oh, many potent, oh, many potent God. Oh, oh, many she and God. Oh, many prayers and God. We say there is all of the gods are all the works. You are, you are, you are. Oh, we say there is all of the gods are all. Other gods, hey, they are the words of men. Hey, 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 Kapara Madulaba. All other gods are other gods. Oh, they are the words of men. You are. I see something like a gold ball. A gold ball. I don't know the full significance of that. But I see the angel of the Lord handing this gold ball to some individuals from house to house, from house to house. Receive yours in the name of Jesus. Please hear me. This is not a time to be distracted. This is a time to zoom in and be focused. Don't let this angel pass you by. I see it. Gold ball from house to house. Receive it. Oh, yes, Lord. My God. I had a spirit of God. He said, that is my glory. Visiting the homes, my glory, my glory. Yes, yes, my glory. The glory that will turn your story around for good. The glory that will cause your story to go around the world. The glory that will make you an enigma to society, a riddle to your colleagues. Makabala Bushai. They will not be able to figure it out. How did he do it? How did she do it? That glory is coming upon you. Hey, come on, receive it. Yes, receive it. Receive that glory. Receive that glory. Jesus, that's it. Receive it. Oh, you're not The works of men. You are the holy girl 
There is none like you. Sweet Holy Spirit. Yes, yes. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your touch. Ile kamun deli kabas. Maguri kazusi. I see the fire of God. The fire of God consuming things that have plagued families, that have plagued individuals for generations. Say the Lord this day. That Holy Ghost fire that came in your home in your life in the form of that glory ball is consuming things that has plagued you plague people close to you plague your family for generation that fire is consuming it now in the name of Jesus that's it that's it go that's it go loose thank you sweet holy spirit no Thank you, Sir Holy Spirit. My God, I'm literally feeling that fire going through me. Jesus, I said, receive it. Receive it. Yes, yes, yes. Go! Sicknesses that have defied medication. Go! Loose it, loose, loose, loose it by the resurrection power. Yes. According to Romans 8, 11. Romans 8, 11. He said, in the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. He that raised Christ from the dead will also quicken, energize, vitalize your mortal body. Receive it now in Jesus' name. Receive it now in Jesus' name. Power! I said, go! Loose! Be delivered. I said, be delivered. I said, be delivered. Be delivered. Ha. Be healed. Be healed. Be set free. Be set free. In the name of Jesus. Thank you to the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Come on, I just give the Lord a wonderful round of applause. Give him a wonderful round of applause. Come on. If you know what has taken place in the realm of the spirit, I tell you, you will be excited. You will be jumping. You will be jubilating. Yes. Give him another wonderful round of applause. Thank the spirit of God for this visitation. My God, my God, my God. Zoom tabiki bush. Mi broko di mahadabosh. E kambos. E lebe kabolumuta. Mabriambosutush. Thank you, sweet Holy Spirit. We worship you. We bless you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. I don't know if you want to say whether it's worship or prayed or visited or, but in Jesus' mighty name we have received because something has happened. Amen. Now, um, Sarah and Co, are you ready now? Okay. Yes, if sir. you're ready, you can just give us that rendition. Okay. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
from the dead, his Lord. God bless you all. Amen. Amen and amen. So let's go back to, I think we're on St. John's Gospel, chapter 20, wasn't it? 20 from verse 1. Now, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb early while it was still dark and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. Then she ran and came to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and said to them, they have taken away the Lord out of the tomb. And we do not know where they have laid him. Peter therefore went out, and the other disciple, Makuska Baloshki Boski, Mungu Julu Bahakoshki Balabosa, Ludili Mahoshki Bahatalia Mahoshki. Today, God is saying that if you would obey his word, if you will open up your spirit, there will be a divine deposit that you will remember for the rest of your life. There's someone you have been crying to God, God, visit me. God, use me. God, touch me. God is saying to you that today is the answer to your prayer. And that gold ball that I saw, that was visiting houses from house to house. Don't let that ball be something that will only be temporary, but do everything to let that glory stay in your home. Let that kabod stay in your home. And as it stays in your home, there will be supernatural happenings in your life, in the life of your children, in the life of your spouse, that when it's all over, You'll be grateful that you are part of this service. If you receive that, give him a shout of praise. Give him a shout of praise. My God, you know, to be honest with you, I don't think I can finish reading that scripture. <laughs> just lift your hands and just worship him. Just worship him. <laughs> Thank you, sweet Holy Spirit. You are Lord. You are Lord. Amen. You have risen from the dead. You are Lord. Every knee shall bow, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. You are Lord, you are Lord, you are Lord, you are Worship him. Picture him right in front of you, in your home. 
from the dead, you alone. Every knee shall bow and every tongue. The Jesus Christ. Amen. My brothers and my sisters, this day, by the special grace of God, I want you to know that Jesus did not do an unaccomplished job. When he hung on that cross and he said that Tetelestia, it is what? Finished. He didn't say to be continued. But it is what? Finished. You know, when that song was going through my spirit that my mom used to sing, Tetelestia is finished. Tetelestia is finished. I knew in my spirit that God was saying something. And God wants us to know that in this season of the resurrection, whatever it is that you might be going through in your life, the death took place. That was a time of disappointment. It was a time of despair. When that which the disciples had put their hope in seemed to have expired. When that which the disciples had believed and trusted in seemed to have vanished into thin air. That was a very, very disappointing day for the disciples and for all who believed in Christ. They killed him. You see, as long as he was still alive, they thought that there was hope. You know, as we say, as long as there's life, there's hope. So they were wishing and hoping, even when he was arrested, that no, look, he's going to do something. He the man. And all of a sudden, they saw the soldiers overpower him. They saw the ridicule. They saw the shame. They saw him ripped off his clothes. They saw the stripes, 39 stripes that they gave him on his back. They saw the flesh being pulled. They saw him hanging on that cross. Little did they know that he hanging on the cross was the best thing that could have happened to humanity. My brothers and my sisters, have you ever gone through something in your life? And at the time that you were going through it, you thought, my goodness, this is the worst thing that has happened to me. The ridicule, the shame, the uncertainty, the fear, the anxiety was too much to bear. But when that phase of your life moved on and you look back in hindsight and you say, my goodness, that was the best thing that ever happened to me. Someone under the sound of my voice. This is what the Spirit of God is telling me to tell you. That challenge that you're dealing with now, it might be the death season. It might even be the burial season where you look confused. You don't know what to do. You don't know how to do what to do. But God sent me to tell you that this beautiful day, as the resurrection has come, as Jesus did not stay in the grave, as death could not hold him captive, 
So are you coming out victoriously? So are you coming out with flying colors? In the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody say tetelestai. Say tetelestai. Say tetelestai. T e t e l e s t a i. Say tetelestai. That simply means it is what finished. Another meaning of that means paid in full. Say paid in full. <laughs> you know, when that word was going through my spirit, I decided to do um, an etymology of the word. Just search the word and find out what did Jesus mean when he said it. So I did a little bit of uh, research, and that, that would take me almost 10 weeks to preach. But I'll, I'll just touch on a few things that I found based on the exegesis that I did on this word, tetelestai. Somebody say tetelestai. It was a Greek word that was used, you know, when, for instance, a prisoner, before the prisoner will be jailed, Okay, they will list all the crimes of this prisoner, everything he'd done. And when they put the prisoner in the cell, in front of the cell, on the door, they will put this paper that had a list of crimes right in front of his cell. So anyone who is passing will know exactly what brought that person to that prison. Are you, are you still with me? So after the prisoner has finished serving their sentence, after the sentence has been served in full, they take that paper to the authorities and they will stamp on that paper. Guess what? Tetelesta. That means it is what finished. It is complete. The sentence has been paid in what? Full. And the prisoner will take the paper with him wherever. So in case he's asked, how come you are out? How come you are free? How come you are delivered? How come you are working here? He will show the paper and say what? Tetelesta. Paid in full. Somebody give the Lord Jesus a wonderful round of applause of paying all our sins, all our crimes in full. So when Jesus used that word, he chose the word carefully. Tetelestai. It is what? Finished. Paid in full. That word is also used between a master and a servant. So when, for instance, a master will give the servant an assignment to do, and the master, after a while, will ask the servant, how did the assignment go? Well, have you finished the assignment? The servant will say what? Tetelestai. That means it is what? Finished. It is what? Complete. You know, when the Trinity had that encounter, have that meeting in heaven, have that conference in heaven. And Jesus volunteered, being the word of God, that he would come and sacrifice and die for humanity. There was an assignment that he was given, that go and make sure that the sin issue of humanity is taken care of. Make sure that this assignment is complete. So when he hung on that cross, he could have said anything, but he said what? Tetelesta. That means it is what? Finished. It is what? Complete. Somebody say Tetelesta. Say Tetelesta. It is finished. 
So maybe since the next time I ask you, have you done what you were told to do? What answer will you give? <laughs> Actually, this morning, that is why I was asking you, Emmanuel, to tell us that, and he said, what, what, what? I asked him three times. I said, Tetelesta, he said, what, what, what? Now you understand it. Say, Tetelesta. <laughs> now that same word, Tetelesta, is used when an artist, after an artist has done a masterpiece, they go back and they admire the work they have done. And maybe they see a little finishing touch for it to be complete and perfect. And they take their brush, dip it into the ink, and they just touch up a little bit and goes admiring the work. He will whisper, guess what? That means it is what? Finished. It is complete. I want you to know, my brothers and my sisters, when Jesus hung on that cross, he did not do an incomplete job. The job he came to do was what? Finished. It was accomplished. That same word is used in business. You know, back in those days, that is why I, I, I had to do this exegesis to find out what did he mean? You, know, you see, sometimes when we read the Bible, we might not get the full picture or the full imagery of what is being conveyed. You see, for instance, if I'm writing, okay, and I'll say, well, back in those days when I was listening to the tape player, the cassette tape player. And I heard this on the cassette tape. I'm sure some of you might ask, now some of you know what's a cassette tape? <laughs> now, a lot of young people don't even know what a cassette tape is. Have you seen a cassette tape before? Yeah, because I've got some here. But I, I guarantee you, there are some young people listening to me, they don't know what a cassette tape is. They don't. Do, do you know where there's one? In the drawer, by the way. Yeah, go, go bring, bring me one. Yeah? Okay, yeah, yeah, get, get me one. I think there's some by the bed. Yeah, J just get me one. I want to show it to those who don't or have not seen a cassette tape before. Quickly. Just, just by the bed, yeah? Who want to know? You bring me one. You know, I, I didn't even know I was going to do this. But I believe the Spirit of God is saying something to someone. I'm trying to explain to you the importance of getting the meaning of things that will position you to receive the full benefits of it. When I write that and someone reads it, that a cassette tape, what's that? They might not get a full picture. So sometimes, you see, that is why we have different translations. In the Bible. So one translation will say he was listening to a cassette tape. Okay. Another modern translation. So that, that would be, for instance, the King James. The King James will say he was listening to a cassette tape. Okay. The New Living Translation will say he was listening to a CD player. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because in this day and age, what will be more common will be what CD players. And even now, we've moved on to CD players. So for instance, the message translation will say, he was listening to what? An iPod, right? Or his phone or something. So that is more contemporary. Now, are you, are you hearing what I'm saying? I know this was not planned. But I'm trying to bring you in the picture of Tetelesta, what that meant when Jesus, yes, that's it. You see, he wasn't even sure. He wasn't sure. He's asking, is that it? That's it. <laughs> that is the cassette tape player. My God, how many of you have seen this in a long time? Yeah. So when this term is used now, cassette 
okay. You know, you have to play one side and those days you turn it around, you know, <laughs> depending on what you're using and you play. You know, one of the things I did, actually, you see, this has got a message on there. My God, Kartala Mashuta. Jesus. You know, this is not a coincidence. This is God. There were lots of tapes in there. I even to bring this. You know, this is one of the tapes that I recorded when I had my encounter with God. This tape. I've not listened to it in a long time now. But the title is, Where Are the Prophets of God? That's what I've got here. That's one of them. You know, I, I was asking the question, God, how come I read in the Bible, these prophets hear you, they see. How come, where are these prophets that can say, that say of the law? And it happens. My God, I have to listen to this after us. Maybe I did this. Maybe I'll say, maybe it's a long time. I can't even remember. <laughs> but it's a long time. It's a long time. It's a long time. Where are the prophets of God? God is trying to say something. You know, the spirit of God is still available. And for those who are watching this, listening to this, if you open up your spirit, that same unction that came upon me, that opened my eyes, that allowed me to utter some of the things that I uttered, that same unction is coming upon you. Amen. You know the question I asked on that table, where are the prophets of God? You will be the prophets and the prophetess that God will raise in these last days. Amen. You see, that time when I did this tape, I wasn't a pastor. I didn't know I would be a pastor. But I was asking God from the depth of my heart, where are these prophets? <clears throat> That can say, that say the Lord. May that unction fall upon you. May that unction visit you. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. So when that word tetelesta is used, back in those days, it was used in relation to a prisoner, like I said, in relation to a servant master, it was used in relation to an artist. It was also used, it was the term used a lot in business. In business. In fact, some years ago, there was a finding, a serious archaeological finding in Egypt. And thank God that Egypt has been in the news lately, isn't it? I think it was yesterday that they moved the remains of almost 21 pharaohs from one museum to the other. They found these remains and they are resettling them into a national museum. And when you look at the video, the pomp and pageantry, the, you know, skill and the flair, and even the cars that they used to convey them, the monumental display and designs, they even had shock absorbers all over that the bodies remain intact of these pharaohs. So in Egypt, they did um, an archaeological dig, and they found the remains of what used to be more or less like a, you know, a revenue service, internal revenue service, or something like that. <clears throat> and they found a lot of papers, a lot of documents, and those documents were stamped, guess what? Tetelesta. Somebody say Tetelesta. So in business, that was the word that was used. When someone was in debt and they paid the debt in full, the creditor would stamp what they used to call the certificate of debt. So when you owe, back in those days, they would give you a certificate of debt. Can you imagine? To show you the same as, you know, like a contract in these days of a loan, for instance. So for instance, if you have a mortgage, and then you pay off that mortgage. So you get the deed of the house. 
And guess what? The deed will no longer be bound by the bank that gives you the mortgage. The deed will now have the bank stamp on that deed. What? Tetelesta. That means what? Paid in what? Full. I don't know what it is that has plagued you in your life. I don't know what it is that has made you worry. I don't know what debt, what art, Sakili Mahakomo Sebeli Akama, Ingaluma Chaboshki. I heard the Spirit of God say, generational debts are being paid today. Amen. I said, generational debts are being paid today. Amen. It doesn't matter how long it has been in that family. That generational issue that has passed on, your mother went through it. Your grandmother experienced it. Your great-grandmother, you don't even know, but she experienced the same thing. Your father went through it. Your grandfather went through it. And here you are, coming along. And you don't even know how you move four steps forward, and you move two back. You move three steps forward, and you move two back. And your life has become like a yo-yo in this season. I speak to you as an oracle of God. That generational debt is paid in full. Amen. The Bible said in Galatians 3, from verse 13, he said, curse is everyone that hangs on the tree. When Jesus hung on that tree, my brothers and my sisters, he became a curse that we might inherit the blessings of Abraham. I command that curse to be canceled. I command that curse to be reversed. I reverse the curse. I reverse the curse. In the name of Jesus, receive the blessings. The blessing that makes rich and adds no sorrow. The blessings that cause people to favor you without even knowing you. The blessings that will make your life a surprise to many. Receive it. If you receive that, open your mouth and give him a shout. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Give him a shout. Kobala Masun TV. My brothers and my sisters, God is up to something today. So in business, when someone paid their debt in full, they will stamp that certificate of debt. Tetelestai. Meaning what? Paid in full. I came to tell you this morning, this blessed resurrection Sunday morning. See, this wasn't planned. But God, who knows what you need? The Spirit of God who is alive and well in this day and age. Symbolically in this resurrection day has interrupted the service and has brought you what you needed to hear. Whatever the enemy has been trying to plague you, that it is not over, that you have to go through it, that you have to pay it. The Bible said, Jesus, took on the curse that we would take the blessing. Jesus, like we read in John 19, he was given that sour wine. When you study that sour wine, it is wine that had been turned acidic. So some call it vinegar. So some translation you see vinegar. Some translation you see sour wine. It's the same thing. Wine that had been turned acidic, that can be turned as vinegar. He took that which was bitter and sour, that you will experience that which is sweet and tasty. When you receive him as your Lord and personal Savior, and you do what you have to do, my brothers and my sisters, whatever you go through, you come out victorious. 
Notice I said you go through. It will not bury you. It will not exterminate you. It will not terminate you. But it will only be a face. Is it life? Everyone goes through these three stages of life. The death, the burial, and guess what? The resurrection. The enemy will want you to focus on the death. Maybe that's where you are in your life, my brother and my sister. The enemy wants you to focus on the burial. Maybe that's where you are. But God sent me to remind you that your resurrection is now. I said your resurrection is now. If you believe, then open your mouth and give him a shout of praise. That reminds me of a testimony of a young man. A testimony of a young man. This young man had actually finished university. And um, life was dealing with him. He was trying to make ends meet. And he had a little minor job that he was doing to survive. But he knew that there is more to this than I'm producing now. He knew that God has got a better plan for him. He knew that, yes, I might be in my death stage. I might be in my burial stage. But he knew that resurrection was coming. So this young man, in spite of the challenges, trying to make ends meet, had applied to lots of companies. But he thought, look, life must go on. At least I have something I'm doing, you know, bit here, bit there. There's more room for improvement. There's a lot more to be done. But let me just manage this <laughs> for now. So this young man decided to get married. He was bold, you know. <laughs> he decided to get married. And he saw a young girl in the church. <laughs> what a better place. Where else to look for a wife and to find one than in the house of God. And he approached this young girl, beautiful girl, beautiful, almost as beautiful as my own wife here, my baby. And the young man said to this girl, said, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in you and, you know, I want to settle with you and, you know, all the vibes that young people will give. I don't know the kind of things they say now, <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> this young girl, <clears throat> look at the young man from head to toe. You know, th th those in Europe, you might not know that look very well. But there's a look that some ladies can give, you know, especially if they've grown in Africa. They look at you from head to toe <laughs> and from toe to head. And from head to toe again, the lady gave her that look. She went on her knees, lifted her hands. The boy thought, oh, my God, I have hit the jackpot. Only for him to hear the young lady say, Ali, Ali, la max sabatani. In interpretation, he said, my God, my God, why? Have you forsaken me? Hey, aduli mahakan bolwana. She said, "Ali, Ali, la masabatani." Looking at that guy, the shoe the guy was wearing was speaking. You know, those the, the shoe has got mouth. It's open. <laughs> he was speaking, but the guy had potential. The guy was doing his best, but things were not just adding up. He was in his death experience. He was in his burial experience. But that girl did not know that resurrection is around the corner. I came to prophesy to someone on the sound of my voice. Resurrection is around the corner for you.
the resurrection power of God has visited you today. And if you stay on course, if you stay in line, there will be a testimony. There will be a manifestation. If you believe that, give him a shout of praise. Come on. Give him a shout of praise. So this young man, shortly after, one of the applications that he has sent, they gave him a call. And to cut a long story short, he was given the job as an engineer in an oil company. And overnight, the fortune of this young man changed. The job came with a company car. He had a wonderful company flat to himself. And shortly after, he met another young girl in the church. And told this young girl, will you marry me? And the young girl agreed. They were preparing for their wedding. And this young man gave a testimony in church of what God has done and how God has miraculously transformed his life from his death and burial state to now his resurrection experience. The young lady, the young lady who he proposed to before, you remember her? Ali Ali, after service, this young man was in his four by four with his bride to be. They were discussing and planning of a mortgage. They were actually going to view a house that they were applying for a mortgage. So after this other girl, Ellie, Ellie had a testimony after church. She spied to see where this young man was, went towards the car, beckoned the young man to come out. Look at the young man. He said, oh, brother, brother. So because I said no once, he didn't come again. You are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are not a man at all. I really thought you were a man. Because I said no one, so he didn't come again. The devil is a liar. God will change your story for people who wrote you up uh, to change their mind. If you believe, I give me a shout. Say, resurrection is coming. Resurrection is coming. <laughs> He said, because I said no one, he didn't come again. Uh, I, I, I really thought he a man. No, he's not a man. He's not. <laughs> you thought the death and the barrier of that person was the end. Maybe the devil might even have convinced you that that is your end. But I came to tell you, resurrection is coming. I said resurrection is coming. Don't think God has forsaken you. Don't think God has forgotten you. Everything that you are going through, say, is working for my good. good. You see, when Jesus hung on that cross, and when the soldiers went and they wanted to break their bones, The Bible said that they broke the bones of the thief on the left. They broke the bones of the thief on the right. But the Bible said when they got to Jesus, he had already died. Because remember, when he said, Tetelestai, the Bible said he gave up the ghost. He checked out. You see, no one could have killed him. He had to lay down his life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Jesus might not have realized that everything was so that the scriptures might be what fulfilled. My brothers and my sisters, that death experience you're going through, that burial experience you're going through, it is to spice up your story so that after you share your testimony, it is you, you mean they told you you could not have children, And now you have two children. You, you mean they told you that there is no way out. You will die and you are now alive and well and healthy. You, so sometimes 
the greater the challenge, the greater the death experience, the greater the barrier experience, the more interesting your testimony. May that be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Anyone that has been going through a death experience, a barrier experience, God sent me to tell you that today, resurrection is visiting you. Amen. I said resurrection is visiting you. Amen. Organs in people's body that is dead. Today, resurrection power is bringing it alive. If you receive that, give me a shout of praise. The Bible said that the scriptures might be fulfilled. When they got there, he couldn't break his bone. Jesus already had that. Psalm 34, 19. Psalm 34, 19. Remember we read John 19. Okay? John 19 from 28 to 42. We also started reading John 20. When you get home, read in your own time, 1 to 17. You put everything together. Psalm 34. This was the prophecy that had gone. He said, many, somebody said many, oh, many are the afflictions of the righteous. Somebody said, but the Lord, Lord. delivers him out of what? Some of them. Out of many of them. Out of a few of them. Out of what? Out of what? Them all. Read the next verse. He guards what? All what? His bones. Not one of them is what? Broken. He guards all his what? Bones. Are you still with me? Not one of them is what? Broken. That means that this word, you see, notice, he was speaking about the righteous. So he said that he guards all his bones prophetically concerning Jesus. Not one of them is what broken. So that word had to be fulfilled in the life of Jesus. So when the soldier got there, he couldn't break the bones because he had already what? died. Zachariah, Zachariah 12, verse 10. I'm trying to show you how sometimes some of the death experiences, some of the barrier experiences of life are all working for our good. They are spicing our testimonies. Zechariah 12, 10. He said, and I will pour on the house of David and on the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and what? Supplication. Then they will look on me whom they what pierce. So this is prophetically. They will look on me whom they pierce. Yes, they will mourn for him as one mourns for his what? Holy son. And grieve for him as one grieves for his firstborn. So this is the prophet Zechariah speaking prophetically what he saw in the realm of the spirit. How Jesus will what? Be pierced. He said, they will look on me whom they pierce. Yes, they will mourn for him as one mourns for his only son. So when that soldier went and his bones were broken, or when he went, sorry, and he had died, and he couldn't break his bone, the Bible said that he pierced his side, and blood and water came. But it was to fulfill the prophetic purpose. That they will look unto him who they have what? Pierced. I speak prophetically concerning you. I speak as an oracle of God. As this tape was brought to me, there are a lot of tapes that someone could have brought in that drawer. But this tape I've titled, Where Are the Prophets? Where are the prophets? That time in my life, I was yearning for God. I was looking and hungry for God. And I said, God, where are your prophets? Those who can hear and say, that said the Lord. It doesn't matter what happens. That word 
will not fall to the ground. When I spoke prophetically from the church in 2016, and I said that God has given us that building. God said he has given it to us. When God spoke to me, he said, go down. The lady who used to occupy it is there. It was a Sunday after church. They don't work on Sundays. I reluctantly went down, and lo and behold, I met that lady. And the lady gave me the number for the owner of that building. And that was what saved us. When all kinds of deals were going on behind the scenes with estate agents, it was direct communication with the owner that ensured that we had favor and the building is now ours. Where are the prophets of God? Those who can hear God and that word will come to pass. My brothers and my sisters, today, there's been an unction that has been released in your life. This resurrection Sunday, I want you to know, my brothers and my sisters, that Jesus did not just die just for himself. He was not buried just for himself. He was not raised just for himself. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 2 as we bring this to a close. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. From verse 1 to verse 10. I want us to read this together. Ephesians 2, from verse 1 to verse 10. I know the Spirit of God has mesmerized the service, but I guarantee you, this is the kind of service that when you are part of, afterwards you know that something has happened to you. Like we used to think, he touched me. And oh, the joy that flattened my soul. He says, something happened, and now I know that he touched me and made me whole. May that be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. I said, may that be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. I said, may that be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Ephesians 2, verse 1 to 10. We're reading it together, one to go. And you... He made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the earth, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh, and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. But God, somebody say, but God. Say, but God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith and that not of ourselves. It is the gift of God not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Wow. I don't know if you heard that. But the Bible is saying that basically when he died, Ephesians 2, 1 to 10 is telling us that we died with him. When he was buried, guess what? We were buried with him. 
And if we died with him and we were buried in him, now that he has been raised from the dead, prophetically, this Resurrection Sunday, I decree each and every one of us, we have been raised with him. And now the Bible says that we are seated with him. Where? In heavenly places. Where? Far above. Somebody say far above. Right. Say like you believe, say far above. Far above. Principalities. Principalities. Powers. Powers. Dominions. Dominions. Thrones. Thrones. Any name that is named. Brothers and my sisters, I want you to know, you are not ordinary. If you believe in Christ, you are seated far above. Say far above. Far above. No sickness is permitted to terminate your life. Yes, they might even say it's terminal. But today, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I terminate that terminal sickness in the name of Jesus. Amen. I said I terminate that terminal sickness in the name of Jesus. Amen. Whatever it is that has plagued you in any shape, in any form, today, by the mysteries of the cross, by the mysteries of the resurrection, you are from above. And because you are from above, you are above all. And whoever is above all is the one that always receives the victory. Nothing will put you under. Nothing will be able to bury you. Hear me. That exam that is confronting you now, that exam that you are about to write, you are above it. I said you are above it. You have what it takes to come out with eight H1s, seven H1s, that every subject you write, you come out with a distinction. Oh, yes, yes, yes. You have what it takes. It's inside you. And if you do your part, if you sit down, if you go through the pain, you see, that's why a lot of people miss it. The truth is that no pain, no gain. Jesus had to go through the pain. And when he went through the pain, the Bible said in Philippians 2, from verse 9 to 11, he said, wherefore, God, somebody say God, God. has highly exalted him, giving him a name that is above what? All names. But before you get a name, that was about all names. He had to go through the death. He had to go through the burial. My brothers and my sisters, my sons and daughters, don't park at that death experience. Don't stop at that burial experience. Resurrection is coming. I can hear the senior prophet David in Psalm 30, verse 7, the B part, I can hear him say, weeping may endure for a night, but joy. Somebody say joy. joy. Say like you say joy. joy. Comes in the morning. Say to your neighbor, say good morning. Good morning. Say like you believe say good morning. Good morning. Say like you believe say good morning. Good morning. That's simply is being prophetic to say that the weeping of the night is over. A new dawn has come. A new beginning has come. When Jesus said, Tetelesta, it is finished. He said that generational issue is finished. That challenge that has plagued you, that sickness is finished. Because the price of that, boom, that stamp has been put on it, is paid in full. Somebody say, Tetelesta, it is finished. Paid in full. Brothers and my sisters, this wonderful Easter morning, as you can tell, 
I couldn't even get into my word. <laughs> but I am out of time. But I want you to know, as the Spirit of God has visited us this morning, it is finished concerning that issue. You might have thought that you have been forsaken. But like that brother, very soon, they will change their confession. Yes! They will say, look, he's calling Elias. Look, where is his God? Look at what has happened. But when the testimony comes, it will be the same ones that will say, is that how God works? Is that how God rewards? They will change their mind concerning you. They will change their confession concerning you. Because the God you serve, he said, it's the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. This resurrection morning, if that spirit has come upon you, he will quicken your mortal bodies. He will give life to that organ that is dead. He will bring life back to that bank account. My God. I literally saw a bank account that was showing red. God is saying life is coming back. I said life is coming back to the bank account. There are opportunities that are coming your way. Ideas that God is giving you. Favor that God is giving you. That will bring money to you. From all angles. You will be sleeping and money will be entering your account. I, I know, I know. You don't believe that. But just keep living and trust God for a prophetic way. I said you will be sleeping and you wake up. Your account is full. Because it's been paid in full. <laughs> Your ideas will bring you supernatural income from all sources. Some of you, you've been depending on that paycheck. Oh, yes, it's a good paycheck. But God is saying he's taking you to another level where your paycheck will only become your tight. I said the paycheck that you are kadima, ilega mundeli bakurabasa. I know it's difficult for you to believe. But you see, that unction that I wrote with when I was writing under divine inspiration, that unction that I spoke this tape on, that I asked, where are the prophets of God? That is the same unction that I'm prophesying to you. I said, very soon, your paycheck now will become your tithe. Amen. So shall it be. If you receive that, just give me a shout of praise. Come on, give me a shout of praise. Just lift your hands all over. Mongo Bolo Bota. He is risen from the dead. He is love. Every knee shall bow. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Now, my brother, my sister, please hear me. I don't know where you're watching this or where you are in your life now. You might be in the burial state. You might be in your death state. You might even be experiencing some level of resurrection. My brothers and my sisters, the Bible said, what will it profit a man if you gain the whole world and you lose your soul? Romans chapter 10 from verse 9 he said that if you believed in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, what a day to fulfill this scripture in your life. This symbolic day of resurrection. The Bible said that being a Christian is hinged not on the birth, not on the death, not on the burial, but the resurrection. He said, if you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead and you confess with your mouth, you'll be saved. He said, with the heart, you believe unto righteousness. 
but with the stomach, with your mouth, the stomach, the weapon, the, the, the end of a weapon, the mouth of a weapon, you make confession to salvation. Confession that catapults you into your salvation, into your resurrection. Just say this prayer after me. Say, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, according to your word, this symbolic day of resurrection, I believe in my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead. I confess with my mouth. Take absolute control of my life. I surrender to you. Spirit, soul, and body. If you just said that prayer, I want you to know, my brother, my sister, you are now translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. You are now a child, a bona fide child of the living God. You belong to the family of God. Get in touch with us. Send us a message. Let us know that you pray this prayer. And we'll help you in any way we can to let you grow. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. So whenever these messages come out, you will receive it. And you will grow into all what God has destined for you to be. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.